For this next lesson, we're going to assume that we've placed the part in a vise, done all the tool paths to machine the top, but now we need to flip the part over. Now when I flip this part over, I could lock it into a set of vise jaws, but I might want to make some soft jaws. That would be a jaw where I cut it away to make it fit the shape of the part. Now you never really want to move the part around. What I want to do is bring in another vise and then flip that vise around to fit over the part. So let's go back to our data panel and go to the folder wherever you saved your fixture. And here I've got that generic vise. I'm going to right click on that and tell it to insert it into the current design again. So now I'll have two copies of the vise. Let me minimize the data panel. Well, the first thing I want to do is to flip the vise over. To do that, I can grab this manipulator and rotate it 180 degrees. I might also want to move it out of the way just so I could see where I'm at to start with. Let me minimize some of these components for the original vise, and then I'll turn off its visibility. Let's go to a left side view. And again, we want to place this so that it's going to be gripping on that edge of the part. Since we're going to be embedding this into the jaws, I can position this so that it's centered this way. And I can lower the vise. I'll lower it 8 millimeters so that it's embedded into that jaw. And we'll OK that. Again, we want to break the link between this vise and the one that's saved in the file. So I'll right click on that vise and break the link. And for now I'm going to turn off that solid body of our workpiece. Now I could sink that part into these jaws, but they're not very thick. There isn't much room to grip on. So we're going to modify these jaws a little bit. Again, I'm going to expand this particular vise I'm going to expand the front jaw so that I can grab all of these bodies and do a move copy to move the front jaw and all of its components out of the way. Next I want to make this jaw thicker. There's a couple ways to do it. Initially you might want to just do a modify doing a push-pull where you just grab that face and pull it out. But the problem is, is that face has chamfers on the front of it. So it tries to extend those chamfers, which gives you a tapered face on it. And that's not really what we want. So we're going to cancel that. So this is a case where all of these chamfers on the part, they look really pretty, but they can make things difficult to work with sometimes. So let's go back to our modify. I'm going to pick each one of those faces to show you how to get rid of those. And in this case, I happen to know that they're a half a millimeter. So I'm going to tell it to move those out a half a millimeter, and that gets rid of that chamfer. Now I have a nice square face. So if I do a push-pull on that face, Oh, again, there's a problem because there's a chamfer on the holes and there's a chamfer on the bottom edge. So you may want to make a copy of this vise that gets rid of all those chamfers so you just have nice square jaws on it. So I'm showing you that because it's just a problem that you might encounter and I want to show you some things you can do to work around it. Now in this case, to make it easier, I'm just going to do a simple extrusion on this face 
and we could have done this with the chamfers on it, but it might not look as good around the edge. So we're just going to move that face out now. I'm going to move it out about, oh, let's say 15 millimeters. And we'll OK that. Do the same thing on this face, but I'm going to leave the chamfers on there to show you what the difference is. So we'll say, create an extrude coming out. And now you can see that little rim because the face is starting from the end of the chamfer. Not a big problem, just something you need to be aware of. So let's turn our part back on and see where that fits. I'm going to grab the whole vise, do a move copy, and I'm going to slide that over about seven millimeters. And then I'll expand the front jaw and grab these components do a move copy and bring those over till they're just inside of that edge. Again, you might want to go to a straight view so that you could see what you're grabbing on, how much you have there. That looks good. We'll say OK to that. So it looks as though it's in the jaw, but you may also want to use this to create the profile that needs to be cut in the jaw. To do that, we're going to go to Modify, and we're going to do a Combine, which is a Boolean operation. Boolean operations allow us to add or subtract these bodies from each other. Now, the first thing you want to pick is the target body. The target body is the body that you want to modify. So I'm going to pick this jaw as the thing I want to modify. Then we pick the tool body. The tool is going to be this part. It's what we're going to use to cut away from this jaw. And we're not going to join them. I want to cut away from that jaw. But I want to keep the original part. OK that. Now if I turn off that part, we can see that cavity cut away into the jaw, but it left the holes in there. Now here's a case where you might want to make a copy of that original body and then remove the holes before you do this. Another thing you could do is use the push-pull options to select those faces and move those faces out of the way. Again, if there's chamfers on there, it might get kind of messy, but we get the idea. You can still just use that front edge to do a profile 2D contour cut. So we could do the same thing for this movable jaw. Again, I could turn on the body, go back to modify, we'll do a combine Boolean operation. The target that we're going to do this to is the vice jaw, and the tool we're going to use is the part. I want to do a cut operation, and I want to keep the tool. Again, if I turn off the body, I can see that profile in my vice jaw. So those are some of the things you can do to utilize the existing fixturing components that are available in Fusion to make visualization of your part a little easier.